All right, shalom, shalom. Once again, as you already know, I need Yehuda Yorra, which is I am Judah the Shuga. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go over a very special topic. Um, before I tell you what the topic is, I want you to understand that if this is your first time coming to the channel, um, definitely like, share, and subscribe. Um, you would know that this is a, a pro polygyny page. Uh, this page um, speaks on and endorse uh, polygyny, um, not polygamy, but polygyny, which is the difference. However, however, there are some things in the Bible that someone out here who might be watching may or may not be aware of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and touch bases on one specific thing, one specific topic. Uh, we're going to deal with the topic of First Timothy chapter three, um, where it speaks of what you would call today monogamy. Now, there are some people out there who do not agree with the statement that I just made about First Timothy three, um, speaking on monogamy. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and give you a wealth of information uh, and let you all decide what is what, if you will. So before we get started, I'll go ahead and show you the verse. Actually, this is First Timothy chapter three, I'm dealing with the first verse. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and give you time to get there really quick. All right, so First Timothy three and verse one. Um, number one, it even lets you know right here qualifications for overseers, uh, right here. But anyway, it says this is a true saying. If as an if though, if the man desires the office, meaning the job of a bishop, what does it say? He desires a good work. Now, unless you already know, um, everybody don't desire to be a bishop. All right, so this is why I start off with saying if. All right, so there are some of you out there who do desire the um, the responsibility of the office to be a bishop. Great, that's a good thing. You would desire a good work, you know, but as you already know, everybody don't desire that. And that's something we'll touch bases on a little later. But anyway, we also know that everyone is not bishops. And even if they wanted to be a bishop, more than likely, well, not more than likely, well, sometimes, they may or may not fit the bill to be one, all right? And that's okay, you know? Um, it's just that some people are qualified to be one and some people are not qualified to be one. All right, so now it goes on to say a bishop, a bishop then must be blameless, but look at here, the husband of one wife. This is the part I want to first focus on. The husband of one wife all right so one of the reasons what we're going to be talking about is um definitely this definition here of mia all right um you have one and then you have first all right so you have some that would say that um this is actually a mistranslation and it would and it's supposed to say um in other words, uh, the husband of his first wife. So this is saying that, ba so basically it is, it, there's a saying that says that um, the one Mia means first and the word um, Mia again is, um, right, because I'm, I'm really trying to, I don't want to misquote, but basically what, what they're suggesting is that First Timothy 3 is a, again, is a mistranslation and what should be there is the word first instead of the word one, all right? So that's what we're gonna talk about. And then I'll go over the misconceptions and things that is misleading some of our brothers and sisters. Um, our brother just inboxed me and uh, asked me about this. He reached out to me and um, I'll, I told him I'll go ahead and address the actual scripture. So um, let's go back. Before we do any breakdowns, I'm going to continue reading. So it says, A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Then it says, Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre. But what it said the bishop must be? Patient, 
It says he can't be a brawler, not covetous. Then it says one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection or submission with all gravity. Then it says, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, rule his own house, how shall he take care of the what? Of the church. The what church? The church of the most high. Then it says, this bishop, he can't be a novice, I mean, he can't be a beginner. Lest he be lifted up with what? Pride. He fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must, who's the he? The bishop. He must have a good report of them which are without, meaning those that will be with outside of the congregation, lest he fall into reproach and a snare of the devil. Because could you imagine if, hypothetically speaking, he was a crackhead, like, oh, bishop such and such? You mean the crackhead? He's your bishop? <laughs> you know, they you know, they laugh him to scorn. All right, so now we just seen uh, the qualifications of a bishop. Um, hopefully that was edifying. We're gonna go ahead and take it a little further. Um, but once again, there is a saying that says that this bishop, as we just got done reading about, or this overseer, or elder, if you will, all right, that this here is not talking about monogamy. They say that this is a mistranslation, all right? And this is what, what the brother was actually bringing to me as well. Um, he told me to watch the video. I don't, I do not know. But I have been brought, this has been brought to my attention um, at least a few years now. So, dealing with this scripture here, it's time to get some understanding now. So, two ways to look at this. If this is talking monogamy only, which we have here, one man, one woman, one thing that lets me know is somebody had to be practicing polygyny then. Think about it. If everybody was monogamous, and if who you call Jesus, or Yeshua, if he established it to be one man, one woman, as we hear in the church, then why would Paul go on record and give a specific amount of number of wives in which the bishop could only have? Because believe it or not, he also says the same thing for the helps or the attendant or the deacons. Because he says that the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses as well. It says, for they that have use, the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith, which is in the Christ Jesus, which are the um, Yeshua HaMashiach. So, we see here there's a qualifications for overseers and then there's also qualifications for deacons. So I'm dealing with the first side of the coin first. If the first side of the coin is saying that everybody must be monogamous, well, we know that that's not true because this is given qualifications for a bishop. And then verse 12 is given qualifications not for a bishop, but yet a deacon, one who's an attendant to help. Not to be confused with what the churches today call a deacon. Um, so if the Messiah or what you call the New Testament already set it up for it to be one man, one woman, why would he go on record and give a specific amount of wives in which a bishop or deacon can have? And remember, this is a qualification. Heck, and think when you think about it, you get some, some bishops today that they don't even have children. Or some deacons, they don't even have children. So how do they qualify to be a bishop or a deacon? That doesn't even make sense. Now, of course, if you're watching this and you're a bishop and a deacon, obviously, you know, I'm not speaking with you, you know, but if you're watching this and if you believe that this is talking monogamy, which I do as well, in this particular verse, that lets us know again that there's somebody outside the church or who could have been coming to the congregation that was poly polygynous because again if it was already set in stone for one man one woman only or monogamy only then there would be no need to go on record to give a specific amount of wife i mean wives in which a bishop or deacon or overseer or a deacon could have that makes no sense it makes no sense at all 
So now what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go ahead and take this a step further now. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Once again, we're going to go to the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. It's in the Apocrypha. And we're going to go to chapter one really quick. As you already know, if you've been watching my videos, you know, the often I definitely read this as a reminder. So it says, Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention. So understand, guys, you who reading this is letting us know that we ought to read this with favor and we also need to read this with what? Attention. Then it says, and to pardon us, meaning forgive us, my bad, pardon us, wherein we may have seemed to come short in some words. You see that? So there were some things he said, look, we fell short on. There was a few words that we did. He says, which we have labored. I mean, we worked hard to interpret, which means what? To translate. So we worked hard to translate these things. But there are some things that we fell a little short on. So it says, for the same things uttered are spoken in Hebrew and translated into another tongue or language have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the Torah itself, mean the law itself, and the prophets, and the rest of the books, have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. So with that being said, there's a few things I need to touch bases on for you guys, all right? So understand that when you're going into the original language, obviously it's gonna have much more of a force to it, then of course dealing with something of course that was actually translated of course so what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh genesis 1 and 1 as you already know but this is something i want to focus on really quick so um genesis 1 and 1 going to the hebrew text all right give you a second to get there all right so it says in genesis 1 and 1 it says Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim ve'etaharetz. All right. Um, now, what I do is first I'll read down to verse five. First, um, verse two it says, "Ve'haretz ha'ita tohu ve'vohu ve'hoshech al pinei tohum ve'ruach Elohim morafet al pinei hamayim." Verse three, "Ve'yemir Elohim yehi or ve'yehi or." Verse four. And verse 5. Alright, and this word here is going to be of importance a little later. But before I do, I want to focus on the first word here is Bereshit. All right, so it's, it has the Hebrew letter bait, the Hebrew letter resh, the Hebrew letter aleph, the Hebrew letter shin. These are the words I want to focus on, actually. Not the yod and tav, which is these two, but here. That forms the word what you know as rosh. Rosh. Go down here first real quick. Rosh and make that bigger. Rosh. All right. Now, this particular says Rosh, but um, those who know Hebrew know exactly what I'm speaking about. The Hebrew word for um, head is Rosh, which has actually the same letters. I'm going somewhere with this. Let's go ahead and flip this over to the English really quick. All right. In the beginning, boom. As we all right, look at this. The first, all right, in place, time, order, rank, specifically first fruit. All right, so it goes and gives a uh, a brief synopsis on where we're going there with this. So we have that word Rosh. All right, let me show you really quick. One second. We're going to go to, um, where are we at? Here we go. Boom. So we have the translated here. You can uh, you can type in translate Hebrew to English. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my Hebrew keyboard. All right. One second. Switch to my Hebrew keyboard. All right. 
So I actually have a Hebrew keyboard actually on my uh, laptop. Um, matter of fact, let me take a picture of it and show it to you guys. All right. Uh, matter of fact, I'll point at it. Okay, let me show you all first. So, I have a Hebrew keyboard on my phone. You see that? All right. And it has the Hebrew letters that I can actually type. All right. So, that being said, let me go back and share my screen. There we go. All right. So, remember earlier I had, um, had the word Rosh. I had the Resh, the Aleph, and the Shin. And I told you earlier it meant head. All right. Top. All right. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. Keep this in mind. This is the Hebrew letter. Matter of fact, let me just show you. H actually is fire. <laughs> um, Resh. All right. Actually equivalent to letter R. <laughs> then you have the Aleph. All right. Then you have the Shin. Rosh. Rosh. All right. So, where am I going with that? Let's go back. There we go. Okay, these are the same letters here that was in Genesis chapter one, verse one. Remember, as I had hot, I had highlighted for you earlier, right here. See that? Let me highlight that for you. That forms the word Rosh. All right, head, top, or first. Keep that in mind. First, it's going to be very important to remember this information because when we go to First Timothy chapter three, things are going to make a lot more sense. All right. So we also have that. But then in uh, verse five, by Yehre Elohim la or, uh, which lets me know, and Elohim, which is God, he called la or light day. In the darkness, Lila. I'm sorry, um, he called Lila night, Vahi. Erev, and it was evening, Vayhi Volcher, and it was morning, Yom Achad, which was one, I'm sorry, day one, in other words, day one. All right. Now, in some cases, you have the word Achat, all right, which could mean first, and you see right here, Echad, which is dealing with the word one. This is also going to be important later. Matter of fact, let me show you. All righty. So, let me put my Hebrew keyboard back on. Oh, it's still on that. Cool. Okay, so we have Aleph. Then we have Chet Dalet. One. Okay? One. One. Then you have the word Achat. One. All right, so I want to show you that. It's a little tough. All right. So now let's go ahead and go back. All righty. Why is this important, guys? It's important to know that because I'm gonna show you later what is the correct translation of First Timothy chapter three and verse two. All right, but it won't make sense until you know and understand what words mean. You're gonna learn in Hebrew, in Greek, and in English. All right. Now, with that being said, let's go to another one. Uh, Exodus chapter twelve. Look at Exodus chapter twelve. All right, Exodus 12. I'll give you time to get there really quick. All right, we're going to verse 16. All right, so it says, Uvayom ha roshon mechrach chodesh. Matter of fact, I can really stop there. So it says, and in the first day, on the first day, it says, there should be a holy convocation, in other words, or a gathering. It's what Mikra, a gathering, a meeting, a rehearsal, an assembly, if you will, a calling. Matter of fact, look, let me show you that in English real quick. Exodus 12 and 16. In the first day, I'm sorry, no, oh, well, I'm tripping. 16. In the first day, there should be a holy convocation. Convocation. See that? Mikra, something called because it has the root word Kra, 
It's something that is called, it is a public meeting. See that? Rehearsal, assembly, as I was telling you, calling. So that's basically what it is. So now we have in the first day, there should be all the complication. Now we have this word first. Look at this. Roshon. Roshon. Let me copy and paste that really quick, guys. Let me skip the space. Look at this. Let me make it bigger. Do you notice a pattern? There's the Rish again here. There's the Aleph again. There's the Shin there again. And all I got to do is take off the Noon, so feet, which is this long little letter like a stick, if you will. It's not going to let me highlight the word. But anyway, uh, matter of fact, let me just do it right here. This. That forms the word Rosh. That's the root the, uh, the word I was dealing with at first. But notice right here it means first. See that? First. It's going to be very important, guys. It's going to be very, very important as we go further in this. Okay? Let's go to um, Sefer Bereshit or the book of Genesis. All right? The book of Genesis. And we're going to go to chapter, uh, matter of fact, let me switch it to the Hebrew real quick. All right. Genesis chapter 25. Let's go there really quick. Genesis 25. Oh, I'm in Exodus. My bad, y'all. Hmm. Genesis 25 and verse 25. So it says, all right. That's um, and, and this is the word to come out or came out. All right. Harishon Admoni. All right. So, um, it let me know, and the first came out red. All right. Kulo, all over. So, here's the word Harishon. Ha Roshon. Let me skip a space and put that there. Boom. Let me blow this up really quick so you can see there's a pattern. All right. So this here is the word the ha. And this is the word Rishon, which is the same thing you've seen here. Rishon. See that? In blue over here? Rishon. It's the same thing over here, but it has the same Hebrew letters. See that? It has a resh, the aleph, and the shin. The resh, the aleph, and the shin, as you've seen up here. And over here, the same thing. The resh, the aleph, and the shin. See that? Ha, rishon. That says the first. All right, the first. Look, let me show you. Um, let me show the screen really quick. And boom. There we go. All right. The first. All right. As I, it just says the first, actually. So, but um, you have, take off the ha, the, boom, first. See that? That's what it actually says. The first. All right. The first. And remember, take these three off and leave the rest, the olive and shin. What we have? Head. Top, chief, main. See that? I'm going somewhere with this. All this is going to make sense later. All this, is, again, is going to make sense later. All right? Let's go ahead and go back. Go ahead and go back. So, again, we have in Genesis 25, 25, Harushon um, Admoni. All right? And the first came out red. But, again, we have... That word right there is Rosh, which is head. Roshon, which is first. I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope I'm not going too fast. If you need to, write this down. Because all of this is going to mean something later. It's all going to mean something later. All right? Now let's go to, uh, matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah. Or Sephira. Um, Yeshaya Hu, which is the book of Isaiah, chapter 44. And let's deal with, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, verse 6. So I'll give you a second to get that. Isaiah 44 and 6. So it says, 
כה אמר יחווה, או יחווה, מלך ישראל וגלו, יחווה זבעות. אני ראשון, ואני אחרון, ומבלעדיי אין אלוהים. So, let's go read it again. כה אמר יחווה מלך ישראל, so, thus saith the Lord, or that's what the King James Version would say. מלך ישראל, the king of Israel, וגלו, and his redeemer, which is who? יהוה זבעות, the Lord of hosts, or armies. אני, I, ראשון, the first, ואני, and I am, אחרון, the last. So he said, I am the first and I am the last. ומי בעל הדי, meaning and besides me, or and without me, which would be more properly, and without me, in Elohim, there is no God or powers. So this is the word once again. Roshon, let me copy, let me paste it. Boom. There it is again, y'all, look at that. It's Isaiah 44, verse 6. See that? Isaiah 44 and verse 6. Same word. Let, letting us know he is first. He is first. So when I see the word Harishon, that lets me know the first. I see the word Roshon first. If I see Rosh, head. Got that? Hopefully you all are understanding the differences in this because this is going to make sense later. It's going to make sense later. So please write this down. All right. And this is probably a video you might have to watch more than once. But write this down because, again, it's going to make sense later. All right. So. And just to make sure really quick. I don't know if I did, but I'm going to go back. Remember, we was at Genesis 1 and 1 and verse 5. I said that's um, day one or one day. Let me show you. Copy. Go here. Oh yeah. Boom. Boom. One day. See that? One day. It's the word Yom. It's the word Echad. Take it off Echad. That's a day. Or a day. Go back. Boom. Yom Echad. Remember earlier? I showed you this earlier when I typed it in. One. Put it together again. One day. So that's what it actually says in Genesis 1 and 1. It didn't say first day. So, you know, in, in your uh, King James Version, it tell you that that was the first day. So watch this. What was the English version? English. Okay, here we go. Boom. In English, verse 5. It tell you that was the first day. But we now know in the Hebrew text, it actually does not say first day. It says one day or day one. See that? That's what you would call today first day. So we're going to learn and understand the context of words. So we have Yom Achad, which is day one. All right, or first day. It's going to make sense. Now, Next thing we're going to talk about is the Hebrew word um, Pekuda. Pekuda. All right. Pekuda. So we're going to go to Sefer Tehalim, which is the book of Psalms. All right. And we're going to go to chapter 109. So I'll go ahead and give you time to get there really quick. Let's go ahead and get it on there. ahead and wait all right so verse 8 right here all right so we have yeah you yeah you that means be or let it be your mind so we have put these two together let his days me a team let his days be few here we go pe ku Dato. That's the root word as Pekuda. All right, that's the word you have for his office. All right, or overseers, we'll talk about later. 
All right. Then we have the word Yechach Echad. Yechach Echad. So what do we have? Let his days be few, and let another take his office. In other words, okay. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. All right. But this is the word that we're going to focus on here. All right. Let's go ahead and deal with it. All right, man. In fact, I can take this off, guys. Hopefully, you all remembered. All right. Uh, here we go for the word his office. Keep this in mind. What word do we have? Pechuda. Pechuda. Visitation. Chiefly. Official. Account. All right. So this is one who's given a, uh, who's put over to, uh, in other words, to count something, if you will. Oversight. All right. That's going to be important later. This is one who does overseeing. He's the chief official, chief lead official. All right. Let's get to the root word here. Boom. Picard. Visit. Muster. That's not what I'm looking for. Here we go. Look at this. Overseer. Overseer. Oversight. Look at that. So somebody here is an overseer. All right. And that's what we see in the text here. Go ahead and um, let's see. Boom. All right, verse 8. All right, boom. Highlight that. Paste that. Boom. Make that bigger. All right. Overseer. All right. That's one way how to say this word. He's an overseer. All right, he's dealing with the office. But what kind of office? Specifically, one who's set to charge over something, to count something as an overseer. Okay? Which exactly why I would explain let his days be few. All right? See that? Let his days be few. Let another take up his office. Somebody that's going to oversee is going to count it in a sense. Let's go to um, Sefer Bamidbar. All right. Now, in case you did not know, uh, Sefer Bamidbar is the book of Numbers. All right. Book of Numbers. And we're going to go to chapter uh, three. Uh, Sefer Bamidbar. We're going to go to verse, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, nope, nope, nope. We're going to go to, uh, so, yep. 32. Look at this. Pachohen, which is the priest. Look at this. Pechudat. All right, Pechudat. Look at this. What is that? Numbers 3 and 32. Look at what it says here. We're dealing with the priest. It says, And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, as you saw earlier, shall be chief over the chief of the Levites and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. What word is that, guys? Let's click on it. Boom. Pechuda. Same thing. In the text, it was pechudat. All right? Root word, pechuda. Oversight. This is the overseer. All right? You see up here up top? Overseer. See there? The role of the overseer is to watch over, direct command, chastise, if you will. All right, so this is the overseer. It's all going to make sense later. All right, but you have the overseer. Keep this in mind. Echad, root word. All right, it's the one that's in charge, overseer, right? Giving an account. All this is going to mean something. Why am I keep bringing that up? Huh? We're going to see. So we basically got overseer, oversight, if you will. So in verse 32, oversight. Let's keep that in mind. All right? Matter of fact, let's get the story on one on Joseph, Genesis 39. Genesis 39, let's get that really quick. It says, and Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him what? Overseer 
over his house and all that he had he had put into his hand. See that? So Joseph or Yosef was made overseer of his house. All right. It says, and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had. See, see this overseer? Joseph, he was over all that he had. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So let's look at verse four again. It says, and Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him an overseer over his house. Let's click on overseer, what we have there. Look what word we got, Bechai. Wow, we keep running to the same root word there. Boom, the pay, the kuf, and dollar. Bechai, see that? That's dealing with overseer, oversight. It's the one in charge, watching over, inspecting, giving the count. Got that? I hope you're following along. I hope you're following along. Why is this important, man? Let's get one more. Uh, uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah 15, no, 11. Yeah, 11 and verse 22, I want to say. Yeah. Look at this. The overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem. See that? It was Uzziah, the son of Benaiah. I'm Sabani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of um, Mataniah, the son of Micha, the sons of Asaph. The singers were over the business or the task of the house of the Most High. But look here, you had your overseers. Look at this, same root word. The pay, kuf, and you have your dollar. This is who? your superintendent. That's going to be very important too because another way how to say this too. All right? Another way how to say this as well. So I want to see here, I want you to see the superintendent. See this? Again, this is somebody who's given charge. He's governor over something. All right? Office, overseer. All right? And that's going to make sense when we deal with 1 Corinthians 12. When it says governments. All right? So, I wanted you to see here, it's the same concept. Same concept. Why is this important? Because when we deal with words that actually mean something, and when we understand the difference between one and first, overseer, because this is one way how to um, deal with the word overseer, but there are other ways as well. But this is something that I wanted you all to understand. One of y'all understand. Matter of fact, um, there's another one. Um, oh, Acts chapter one and um, twenty. Acts one and twenty. Yeah, it says for this written in the book of uh, ah, for this written in the book of Psalms, that his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his look at this, Bishop Brick. Let, uh, let another take. It's where bishop, bishop, all right, in the Greek, which we're also going to be dealing with later as well, all right? Inspection, superintendents. Remember, we were just learning about this earlier, right? The office of the bishop, bishop, visitation. See that? Investigation, inspection, visitation. See this? The act by which God looks up into and uh and searches out the ways so he's watching inspect these character of men in order to uh, judge them uh says the lot according uh whether joyous or sad oversight and we learned that earlier overseership office charge the office of an elder it's going to be important as well the overseer the presiding officers of a christian church understand that all right, so let's go into another word, which means to see. Why? Because they're going to be expecting, if you will, keeping watch over something. All right, in the Hebrew New Testament, where we at? Boom. Look at this. Boom. 
Same word that we have. Let me skip the space. Boom. Right down here. Look at this, guys. This word is the same as this word. Peku dato. Peku dato. Only difference is you have the sharuk. The sharuk vibe. It makes an ooh sound. This is dealing with the uh, matrix like the Yonis system where words, where, where concepts was used to indicate a vowel, but it didn't change the meaning. It still is making the same sound. All right? So, here we go. It's the same word here. Pekudato. Pekudato. All right? I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to understand that. Same word. With that, boom. All right? Now, this was quoting what I had read earlier. The Psalms 109, verse 8. Same word. I hope you all are following along and understanding this. We have Pekudato, the root word Pekad, within that word. And that lets us know is to basically give an account, to oversight, to oversee, right? So understand where I'm going with this. All right, so there's another thing I want to touch bases on really quick. Um, we're gonna type. I'm gonna type this in really quick. Um, Exodus, Exodus. All right. Oh, verses. Matter of fact. All right. Who was around? Uh, I want to say maybe 18, 19. Why I was putting that out there. Oh well. So we have that. So this receptus. I want to say maybe um 10, 16, boom. Okay, so we got 15, year, year 15, 16, we have year 18, 19, I mean 1890. Now obviously Textus Receptus is actually older than what we have with James Strong. Where am I going with this? So um let me go to first timothy really quick before i explain first timothy chapter three remember i told you earlier we're going to be going deeper and i told you we're going to be going into hebrew the greek and the english and i gave you words earlier to remember all right the word achad um echad achat uh for one i told you to remember the word roshon which is first haroshon the first, if you will, or Rishon, I was shown first. Um, so yeah, the word Pakad, Overseer, Oversight. These were a few words that I told you to remember. Rosh, Head, you know. So all these things were uh, important for you to remember. And all these things are going to be relevant when we go into the actual text or the little history as well. All right, so remember earlier when we read First Timothy 3, you know what um it says the bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife uh when you go into the strong's definition of james strong's here you have strong's all right um irregular feminine one or first all right so according to strong's or james strong's in 1890 um he said that that word can mean one or first now um one thing i would like to point out is he does point out certain things like for example uh, he says these particular verses here, it actually means one, like literally one, if you will, which of course we have in First Timothy three, because we see it right here, right? See that, and we also see verse twelve when it's dealing with a deacon as well. He's saying here, according to Strong's, he says that um, um, in the King James version, it occurs sixty-seven times. The word one. The word Mia, the word in, when it meant one, that's uh, 50, uh, 67 times. And he also pointed out verse 12, as you see here, the word one. All right, this is what he's saying here, according to Strong's. Who is this man? Let's go ahead and click on the share real quick. One second, guys. Okay, boom. Here we go. Okay, so we have James Strong. All right, it'll pop right on up. James Strong. Was James Strong's it says James Strong's was American academic biblical scholar, um, lexographer, Methodist. So this was his actual denomination. As you know, he was a theologian. All 
all right? Believe it or not, this is the person who put together the uh, Strong's Concordance. But anyway, it says, best known being the creator of the Strong's Concordance. What is the Strong's Concordance? This is what we have here, all right? So according to James Strong's, 1890, he rented that word as one, right there. That's what he did, one. And he used the same word for the word first in these particular scriptures only, such as Mark 16, 1 and 2, John 21, um, John 20, verse 19, Acts 20, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 16 and uh, 2, Titus 3 and 10. See that? So when you look at uh, Matthew 5, 18 and 19, Matthew 5, 36, Matthew 19, 4 through 6, um, he's rendering that word one as actual one, all right? So, however, um, the other thing I had wrote down was uh, Textus Recepticus. All the way, matter of fact, let me do the, uh, boom, here we go. Uh, it's year, boom, 1890, there we go. So see that, the Strong's Concordance was originally published in 1890. All right, which of course makes sense because, you know, James Strong's uh, living in the 1800s, as you see here. And this is not the first time I talked about this. Uh, you see, he lived from 1822 into, uh, died in 1894, if you will. So now, another thing I want to deal with, um, Textus Recepticus, um, so Receptus, um, yeah, there we go, boom. So, there we go. Textus Receptus. All right. Boom. So, we see here, this dates back before who we know as James Strong's in 1890. As you see here, um, in Christianity, the term Textus Receptus is a Latin word for what? Received text. That's what it actually means refers to all printed editions of what? The Greek New Testament. See that? From um, Erasmus, Novum, um, which we have the 1516, of course, to the 1633 um, Elisavier edition. So this predates what we know as your um, James Strong's, and I'll be going somewhere with this. So why is it all so important? Someone said, what does it have to do with the King James Version? Because guess what? It also has English translations that came from the received text or the Textus Receptus. One of the things, one of the, one of the ones that name is the King James Version 6 and 11 edition Bible. See that? Look at that, the King James Version also the KJV Bible and the authorized version is the English translation of the Christian Bible. Well, we already know the understanding of that, but here it is, boom. So why is that important, guys? So going back, hopefully you're following along with me. That's what we just got done dealing with. The Strong's Concordance was put out in 1890. I'm not saying nothing is bad with the Strong's Concordance. I'm not saying it at all. But what I am saying is there are other information or all other sources out here as well to which you can get the meanings of words if you want to deal with the Greek text, okay? So, when dealing with that, let's go ahead and do the share screen again. I'm gonna go back, boom. So, remember what said, um, going back, matter of fact, even in Titus, same thing, Titus 1, um, when it says, if any be blameless the husband of one wife, same thing there, Mia, see that? But guess what? The Titus is right here. That meant literally one. But I'm gonna further show you this later. All right, because you know when you go into the Strong's Concordance, your 1890, you said one or first. All right, agree, first, one, etc. So it's given uh, more than one meaning. But it's letting us know that this word comes from this word. Heis. Keep that in mind. Was meant literally one. All right. It's going to be very important as I continue on. All right. I'm moving slow on purpose. 
So guess what, guys? Remember we learned about TR, Textus Receptus, or the Receive Text? Did you know that that translation is actually available? So you have different versions of the Greek New Testament. And we learned earlier that those were all the ones combined was here. So we have the Greek New Testament TR. See that as you see up top right here? Greek New Testament Textus Recepticus. And we get to see the actual numbers. So guess what? For the qualifications of elders and that actual text, the Textus Recepticus, which is before the James Strong's, it has that word as heis. Keep that in mind, which is literally the word one, singular, singular. The Textus Recepticus, all right? Also, the Bazatinian, which is also before James Strong's, all right? Titus 1 and 6, same word right here, boom, heis. Here it is, let me highlight it. Boom. Heist. Look at that. Boom. Heist. Literally one. I'm going somewhere with this, guys. The Strong's Concordance. Of course, it's a great resource. Of course. Of course it is. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. But guess what? The Texas Receptacus, which is before James Strong's, rendered that word as one, as a literal one. So we can't say, oh, well, you know, uh, the translators, they was, you know, they, they, they was thinking of monogamy. No. And I'm going to show you further later. That's not the case. It's not the case. So again, again, we see here, ice. That's there. See that? Boom. Ice. Definitely there. Definitely there. Definitely there. So, in context, we have uh, Paul, he says, to Titus, my own son after the common faith. So he looked at him as a son. He says, grace, mercy, and shalom, and peace. From God the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. But this cause mean this reason that I the in Crete, which is an island. So he left them on a small island, right? Because he looked at him like a son, all right? And that was the reason why he left them there. He says that you should set in order, right? The things that are wanted, meaning lacking. I need you to do something for me. I need you to set something in order. Something that we don't have, something that's lacking or wanting. He says, an ordain, meaning a point, or to establish. Who? Elders. Look at that. That's why you have right here, qualifications for elders. So he's telling him to establish, or appoint, or ordain elders in every city as I appointed you. What else he said about these elders? If any be what? Blameless. What else the elders have to be? The husband of one wife according to the Texas Recepticus, which is before James Strong's, that word was rendered heist, literal one, literal one. It says having faithful children, not accused of unride or rulers. So you see right here that these bishops are elders, they have to also be family men as well. Then it says what? For a bishop must be what? Blameless as the steward of God. It said this bishop or this elder can't be what? Can't be self-willed. Right, not soon angry, not given to wine. They say he can't drink wine, but he can't be given over to it. Can't be a drunk. No striker, that's a brawler, not given to filthy lucre, in it for the money. See that this sounds like first Timothy 3, we were just reading. But it says, but a lover of hospitality. That's the people gonna be bringing bringing them in. It says a lover of good men, sober, meaning a way, have a sound mind just, holy, and have to have self-control, temperate. Holding fast, or standing firm on the faithful words as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, which is the right teachings, both to what? Exhort and to convince who? Them naysayers, them gangsayers, those who are going to try to go against him. Why is he saying this? Because he said 
For there are many that are what? Unruly and vain talkers and liars, deceivers, right? Especially they're the circumcision, our own people. He says, what do you say about them liars? He says, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, right? We see this today. Some of these elders be teaching these lies and convert a whole house today with false doctrine. People so easily moved. But then it says, what they be doing? Teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, for the money. See that? Says one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, not a prophet of God, but a prophet of their own, said what? The Christians are always liars evil beasts, slow bellies. He said, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be what? Sound in faith. See that? Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. See that? But now, when we look at the Greek New Testament, Textus Recepticus, hold on, watch this. Matter of fact, take this receptacle. Matter of fact, I know what I want to do. Into in here. Boom. Verse six. Boom. Look at that. Ice. That's literally one. Look at that. That's what it says right there. Let's go to First Timothy right quick. Let's see if we get the same thing. First Timothy three. Verse two. Look at this. One. Ice. It did not say first. It did not mean first. This is before the James Strong's translation or the lexicon that was put out. So the word there is literal one, okay? That's what that word says there, literal one. Hopefully you're looking at that, literal one. Wow. Literal one. Let's see what the Bazatinian says. Bazatinian, boom. Which again is before. Heis. Look at this. Une. Women or wife, if you will. And you click on it. Boom. Une. Une. Look at this. Even Strong's new woman, but it specifies wife. That's the type of woman that it is. Heist. Heist, one. See that? One. Numer in, in, a, in a numerical sense, one. That's what that is. That's what that means. <laughs> Excuse me. So, look at that. This has nothing to do with translators being... Uh, influenced that's a lie and I'm not even done I'm not even done but I wanted you to see what it is that I'm saying we have the James Strong's because again when you go to the James Strong's that was in 1890 remember he lived in the 1800s the 1890s that's um, the word one uh, it says one or first, right? But the same Strong's made it clear that all of these verses you see here meant literal one. These verses you see here meant agree. And these verses you see here meant, I'm sorry, um, the, the ones you see here meant first and the ones you see here meant agree. See that? So he specifies, but this particular verse First uh, Timothy three, uh, one. I mean in two, and then of course verse twelve in Titus one. He lets us know that that is um, one. It's in literal one. So technically, he really agreed. But I'm bringing this out because people misuse the Strong's Concordance. So what I did was I went to the Textus Receptacus of the received text, which predates the James Strong. So therefore, is no misunderstandings because a lot of people who will say well the word heist meant literal one i've been i've been hearing this but guess what then if it if you saying that heist means literal one 
then that means the Texas Receptacus, which existed long before James Strong's, has the word rendered there. And even James Strong's agreed that that particular verse is singular as in one. But again, this all lets us know, if we're looking at it from the perspective that I'm bringing it out is in the form of monogamy, then that lets us know what? These bishops, these elders, and these deacons should only have one wife. One. If, of course, they believe in what we call the New Testament. They should only have one. One. These are the ones that are dealing with the congregation. They're dealing with the congregation. They should only have one wife, one woman. One. And again, I'm not done. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. First Timothy chapter three, verse 12 and Titus one and six. It is said that when you read in your King James version of the Bible, when it said the husband of one wife, oh, that didn't really mean that he had to be monogamous. So again, you have elders, bishops, deacons, which are helps that are over these congregations and um, I really truly believe that they have a misunderstanding and some of them might do and some of them may be lying but I do know and understand that if you're a bishop, a deacon or an elder you actually have to have one wife so if you're watching this and you're a bishop, a deacon or an elder over a congregation, a literal congregation yeah, I truly believe in my heart you have to step down. If so, you're going against the Bible if you believe in what we call the New Testament. And if you have an issue with it, then just put Paul's writings down. A lot of people stumble at them anyway, twist his letters anyway. So, where we at? Matter of fact, before we do, before we hit this here, those who read Hebrew already know what this is. But before we hit this, all right, there is something I do want to touch real quick because we were dealing with the uh, Texas Receptus, which is the uh, received text. Um, and remember, I had shown you that um, that the Strong's Concordance had the word Mia, right? But I showed you the Texas Receptus, which is older than the Strong's, had what? You remember the word? I remember Heis, right? Blue Letter Bible. A lot of people use the Blue Letter Bible. Check this out. First Timothy chapter three. All right, First Timothy chapter three, real quick. Look at this. So First Timothy three, it says, "This is a true saying: If the man desire the office or the job of a bishop, he desire the good work." Verse two says, "A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife." Oh, let's see what it says here. Bishop then must be blameless, right? The husband of one wife. Look at the word there, guys. Heis. Again, this is for you people that says Heis is literally one. Strong's G, 1520. Heis. Heis. Hmm. Look at that. Oh, do they know something that I know? I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm definitely sure they do. Let's go back. Let's go. Uh, let me exit out of this. Let's go to verse 12 right here. All right? Boom. It says that the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Look at that. Ice. Once again. Strong's G, 1520. Ice. Mm. Ice. 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 Look at that. One Titus, chapter one. Verse six, look at this. If any be hu if any be blameless, the husband of one wife. Remember this. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. All right. So yeah, here we go. Boom. Look at what we have here. This is not the Strong's. Look at that. Let's click on that. Strong's G fifteen twenty. Heis. Heis. Wow. Look at that. Heis. Ice. So let's go back to the um, here. Um, that bishop then must be blind husband and one wife. This is the Strongs. The Strongs didn't have the word ice. 
he put me up. So I was trying to tell you earlier that the Texas Receptacus, which is older, has the word ice. Ice. So James um, Strong's, his perception is, his understanding is Mia. The Recept, uh, the Receptus, um, the Texas Receptus is Heiss, Heiss. So those of you be like, oh, it literally means one. Oh, well, there you go. Means one. See that? Now, again, when we look at bishops, all right, let's click on that. All right. Uh, from the Greek, all right, Episcopos, all right, a superintendent, that is a Christian officer in general a charge of the church, is a church body, literally and figuratively speaking, is a bishop overseer. That's what we have there, okay? Coming down, Thayer's definition was also in the 1800s, an overseer, a man in charge with the duty of seeing the things, um, to be done by others done rightly, right? See that? A curator, guardian, or superintendent, a superintendent, or what? Elder or overseer of a Christ following church, obviously. See that? This is the job of a bishop. So he literally is watching over an entire congregation, if you will. All right? He's a government, part of a government body. He the head honcho, the one in charge. All this means something. Now remember we was dealing with overseer earlier. Oversight. Right? And I was telling you it was one way to say that. But there's also another way to say it as well. Alright? So with that being said, um let's go and uh deal with what I had earlier. Uh we're gonna let me share my screen again. Boom. So I definitely want to share that with you all for whatever that's worth. Hopefully you get an understanding. Now, that being said, let's go into the Hebrew text. Of course, my favorite, all right? So this is the Hebrew New Testament, as you see here. Um, you have Hapsor HaKadosha Alpi Matai Perich Aleph, which is the Holy Gospel according to the mouth, the path, the mouth of Matai, which is Matthew, short for Matiti Yahu. Uh, Perek, which is the chapter, Aleph 1. So as you see here, Sefer, root word Sefer, was given an account. Uh, Sefer to the Yeshua HaMashiach, Ben Tavi, Ben Avraham. So the book of the lineage, of what the King James Version says, our generation of uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Ben Tavi, son of David, Ben Avraham, son of Abraham. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to actually slow down with the reading uh, of the New Testament because I know some of you all may have some issues, so and that's cool you know i'll go ahead and slow down uh we're gonna go to uh let's see what i want to hit first um um yeah okay we're gonna go to um here um this is um first timothy chapter three i apologize first timothy chapter three so i'll go ahead and give you time to get there First Timothy chapter three, first Timothy chapter three. This is gonna be important later as well. Boom, got that. For those who don't know, you can type, also you can type in translate, uh, ah, go on Google, type in translate from Hebrew to English. Whatever you say here or type here, it'll translate in English. I'll give an example and then put on my Hebrew keyboard. All right, watch this. Okay. Um, Shalom, peace. I remember the earlier. Where we at? You know, top boom. In the beginning, see that? Bara, see that? Boom. See that? Where we at? And boom. God created the. Where we at? Yep, and then we get where we at. Where we at? Where's that? I can't see where we go. Where are you? There we go. See that? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or I can just say it. Elohim et Hashemayim ve'et 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. See that? It didn't. I said it so fast, it didn't even <laughs> catch up. But um, in the typing, but you see, it actually says that. So you can actually do that as well, and that's going to be important because you have some people say, "Oh, the uh, the translators were and uh, you know they were inspired to you know in monogamy and you know so they put this word, they put you know this word um, instead of that word." Nah, that's not true. All right, so we're gonna as you see right there, Google is uh, translation is unbiased to uh, monogamy, if you will. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, we're gonna go ahead because it's about to stand it. All righty. So that being said, boom. Up top it says Igret Palos Haroshona. El Timo um ah, tongue twister. Uh Timotios. Perek Gimel or Gimel. So what we have, Igret is a letter, writing, a pistol. Then we have Palos, which is Paul. Ha the Roshona. Oh, remember that word early? I told you remember that word. Remember this word? The Rish, the Aleph, and the Shin. Who remembers what that is? What 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 word is that, guys? Who remember? Anybody remember that? Yeah. First. See that? First. This is very important. So we have, and then remember the word Roshon, right? Or shown was what? Anybody remember? First. Right? Remember we went to Isaiah 44 and 6, seen the word or shown? It's the same word. The only difference is you have what's called a final noon, which is this word here. Right? Which is a uh, hikmon, which is another word we're gonna be dealing with later. But um it has this letter. This letter is the final noon, and this is the regular noon, it's the same word. Alright? Then we have L, which is two. And this is who you know as Timothy, all right? T, Mo, T, Os, Timotheos, all right? Here at chapter Gimel, or Gimel, which is the third letter in the Hebrew Aleph bait, okay? Where am I going with this? Uh-oh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, we're gonna deal with this. All right, so we're in First Timothy chapter three and verse two. Now, for those of you who know the Hebrew language, did you catch what I catch? Did you catch what I caught? In other words, okay. It's giving some qualifications here, but this what stands out to me: Baal Isha Echat. So, I noticed the word echat here, but I did not see the word roshon, rosh, uh, yeah, roshon, roshona. I didn't see that word. I see the word echat. Hmm. So, Baal, who you know is Baal, if you will, because it's a neutral term. Um, for example, if you look at Proverbs 31, um, the who can find a virtuous woman, right? Uh, the next verse, the heart of her husband. You look at the word husband up, it's the same word right here. In the actual Hebrew text, it's the word bala, the feminine way I say it. For those of you, oh no, it's Baal, Baal. That's another topic though. I have a, a topic on this already. But anyway, Baal, which is a husband, a owner, or Lord in this context. So husband, Isha, you know, is wife. Echat, which is one. But this one is not referred to as first at all. Somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. But I'll be dealing with this later. I just want to show you first. But all Isha Echat. Now, when I go down to verse 12, let's see. Do you notice what's in verse 12? Look at this. Ha Shemash, um, Shemashim. It's funny too because the word Shemesh is the word for sons. So somebody might read this at the sons. Wait, what? This means the attendant, in other words. All right, the attendant, the help, if you will. This is what you know as a deacon. All right. 
Then we have Yehu, Chal, look at this, Echad, uh-oh, Baal, Isha, Echad. That's gonna mean something later. None of that meant first. Hmm, Echad is one, Baal is owner, Isha, wife, Echad, one. What do we have here? Let's go ahead, boom. What do we got there? Husband of one wife. It did not say first. It did not say Roshon. For example, I'm gonna type, I'm gonna let me erase this and type in the word Roshon for my Hebrew keyboard. Okay. So for example, I would have the Resh, the Aleph, um, uh, where we at Shin, Wav, Memzofi, boom. I will say first, if you will. But it did not say that, guys. So this was this says Baal Isha Roshon, which would be the husband of the first wife. Didn't say that. And I'm gonna go further in a second. Just be patient. But going back, I mean, excited of that. Going back here in First Timothy three, right? In verse two. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Boom. We got um. Here we go. Baal Isha Echad. Let's click on that real quick. Boom. Husband of one wife. It did not say first at all. Again, let me do my thing. Husband first. Look at this. It didn't say first wife right there. I even put Roshona. It didn't say that. Somebody's lying. It's not even in the Hebrew Greek. I mean, Hebrew or the Greek. It's not even in the Hebrew text. Not at all. Not at all. But check it. Let's, let's go out of this real quick. Boom. Let's go to Titus real quick. All right. So we have Igoret Polos. So the Epistle of Paul. L2. Titos, Titus, Piret, chapter Aleph, one. Remember, we verse six. In ye mate. All right. Ish, Tom. Here we go. Over all Isha Echat. <clears throat> Look at that. Somebody's been found, discovered this. What? Look at this. What? Let's copy. Let's paste this real quick. Boom. And the husband of what? One wife. Let's take the word one off real quick. And then let's do be shown again. See that? Now we know the translation is acting crazy, but you take the word first off. Right? Boom. See, I man, I'll tell you bail earlier. Same thing. For all husband owner look at that so again boom and, and the husband of one wife and the husband of one wife so going back this right here is letting us know the husband of one wife not it says not it has nothing to do with first the word first is not there it's not even recorded there at all Remember going back? Let's go back to uh where we at? Boom. Um chapter three, boom. Look at this. Copy and paste again. Husband of one wife. Let me type in Rishon again. Um first. Let's type in the first. Look. I'm not lying to y'all. Look. <laughs> Let me type in. Here we go. The first one. But obviously, first, how do we show them? It's not even there. You don't even say that in First Timothy 1 if you want to go with this right here. The first one has nothing to do if a man was originally, it was with the woman he was originally married to. 
That's not what First Timothy uh, 3 is saying at all. And remember, we were able to speak into it. Remember I did this? In the beginning, God created. Yom Achat. Day one. Day one, remember that? Remember these words? Guess what? Watch this. Habaal Shel Ishto Ha Roshona. The husband of his first wife. That's something I should see there. That. I don't see that. Let's do it again. Habaal Shel Ishto Ha Roshona. The husband of his first wife. Why don't I see that there? I don't see that. Somebody lying. Matter of fact, let me type it out. Because all the words didn't come up. Let me go. Boom. Mm. Mm. What's the only? How many I am? Boom. Boom. Feminine. Oh, hold up. Wait. Sorry about that. Okay. Um. I bet I am. Yeah, my bad. All right. Hey, boom. Husband. All right. The husband. Shell. The husband of. Here we go. Ish. Uh, where we at? Can't find a letter. Ish. So, boom. Uh, I'm not done. Huh. Shin. Uh, Kolam, Moon, hey, boom. Look at that. That's what I should see. Something like that. That's what I should see. Habalah, the husband of his first wife, in other words. That's what I should see. That's what I should see. Like that. Habaal Shel Isto Ha Roshona. The husband of his first wife. It don't say that there. Here. That says the husband of one wife. Somebody's lying to you. Somebody lying to you. So it's not in the Texas Receptus, which predates the Strong's Concordance, which was originally printed in 1890. And it's not in the Hebrew New Testament. So even when it was being translated, it was understood what it was from the Hebraic perspective. It's not there. It has nothing to do with saying that a bishop, elder, or a deacon can have more than one wife. No, that's no word recorded in scripture. If you are subscribing to what we know as Paul's letters, it was said that they had to be the husband of one wife, monogamous, which lets me know what? That there are people who have to live back then and during this time have to been polygynous as well. Because if it wasn't, then there would be no need to say that a bishop, deacon, and elder had to only have one wife. He wouldn't have specified the number of wives in which he could have. The word Rishon was not there. Harishon was not there. Harishona was not there. At all. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it's right there. But guess what? It's not here. So somebody's lying. But as you know, everybody don't fit the job of the office of a bishop. We get that. But this is for those who are desiring that job. Period. Now let's go to 1 Timothy 3 and 12. Let the deacons, right? Remember I was telling you earlier, let me go there real quick. 
And I was showing you earlier, first Timothy three, boom. Look at this. But all Ishaqat, the owner of the husband of one wife, even you see it right here in the neck, you see right here. Same words, the attendant. Let me copy and paste that real quick. Boom. Uh, let me share. Boom. Little wait, just real quick. About all the shell is to ha rushona. The husband of his first wife. Didn't say that. It didn't say that. But let's see what I copied and pasted. Remember, I told you earlier. Uh, the word shemes it can mean like the sons but let's scroll down look at this you see right here on my mouse is one who serves an attendant a minister see that why why does that mean that let's see because today you see uh people who are deacons be teaching you see that right so and today, that's the modern meaning of a deacon, but that's not the biblical meaning. The deacon was the one who served and attended and ministered, but we're going to find out what, though. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the new share. Boom. Oh, man. Let's go ahead and deal with that. First Timothy 3. For, let the deacons, boom. Look at this. So it says, probably obsolete to run errands. Hmm. An attendant. And we just saw earlier attend. Look at this. This person is a waiter. At what? A table. This is person serves food. Running errands and things like that. What you call an errand boy, basically. Get stuff done. It says, in other mental duties, specifically a Christian teacher and pastor. Now we notice the modern meaning. It says technically a deacon or deacon is deacon, minister, servant, because you and I know those in the Hebrew, a teacher is a moray. People know that. Some do, some don't. A lot of people is not gonna understand that though. But that's your homework. Ask somebody no Hebrew. How do you say teacher in Hebrew, in the modern Hebrew, a moray? I'll tell you. So anyway, it says one who executes the commands of another, especially of a master, a servant, an attendant minister. It's given another example: a servant of a king, another one, a deacon, one by who the virtue of the office assigned to him by the church cares for the poor and has charge of the dis uh, a distribution of the money collected for their use. A waiter who serves food and drink is given different meanings. So this would be what you know as a help. The bishop would be one who you know as the of the governed body, if you will. Now, the word Picard, as we had learned earlier. All right. Let's go back to the New Testament. Matter of fact, no, I can just do it from here. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe I can just do it. Forget it. Okay, so right here it says the Hakmon, the Hakmon, Ha Eda Zeru. What do we got here? Let's see what that says. So we have, um, and the bishop of a congregation, right? Must let's go ahead and boom. So you know, let me click on new share, boom. Okay, that's what I read in actual Hebrew text. Let me copy and paste that. Boom. Look at that. And the bishop of the congregation. That's what's actually in the Hebrew text. So that's how we know and understand that this bishop, like right here. So you have Haida, which is the congregation. Boom. You have the the, which is and. Boom. Bishop. Hakmon. A bishop. That's the other way how to say it for your overseer of your church. That's another way how to say it in Hebrew. Understand that? Going here, boom. And the bishop of the congregation. So going back, 
to um, what we had just read. This is the Bishop of a Congregation. See that? It says it right here, qualifications for overseers. Down here, qualifications for deacons. Going to Titus, chapter one and verse six. Uval Isha Achat. This is talking about monogamy, the husband of one wife. That's what that's talking about. It has nothing to do with a um, elders being um, misunderstood or that was inspired through monogamy. No, that's what it actually say. That's what it say. That's what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and clear some of this stuff up. Okay, hold on, so. Right. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm also my bad. Y'all thought I was showing my screen. I'm showing my screen. I'll share this one first. Okay, cool. So um, let's go ahead and deal with something. Um, now, cause understand, look, everybody, again, don't desire the office of a bishop. Now you have another doctrine out there. Well, you know, when it said the bishop must be blaming his husband on one wife, and you know. Um, not in for the money, or filthy lucre, not giving to wine. But should you all want to be that? Well, yeah, no doubt. I get where you're coming from, but however, the scripture said, if any man desired the office of a bishop, that's not everybody's job. Everybody can't be bishops. Everybody can't be deacons. Everybody don't fit within the same administrations. Now we all one body, different spirits within the body, but we have not the same office. Right. We read that in Romans 12, 4 and 5. We read that in 1 Corinthians 12, 12. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, speaking of 1 Corinthians 12, aha, let's go there real quick. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, we have, in fact, let me go here, boom. We have Igoret Palos, which is the um, uh, Epistle of Paul. We learned it earlier. Harishona. Aha. First. <laughs> so the first epistle of Paul, L, which is two. Hachorin. Look at this. Teim. Hachorin Teim. Perech. Yo, which is ten. Bet, or vet, which is two. So we have um, the letter of Paul. The first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 12. All right. There's that Harishona again. I remember earlier we had the um, word Rosh. Remember that? Rosh. Remember that? Rosh Aleph Shen. Oh, there we go. So, we're in chapter 12. We're going to hit the um, 28th verse. Yeah, 28th verse. I'll let you go ahead and get that real quick. Well, First Corinthians chapter 12. Okay. All right, so in verse 28, all right, this is dealing with all the, um, um, what well, we're dealing with the one body, the ministry within the body, if you know. So it says, Omehim Sam. Elohim Ba Kahal. So in other words, uh, as you know, as God have set some of them here, he says, in the crowd, or um what you know as the church, if you will. Look at this. Roshona. Ah, look at that. First, remember this word? Look at it. Oh, let me show y'all, man. Just real because we keep seeing this. Right? Hope you've been following along. Roshona. All right. Look at this. First, look at that. Roshona. That's first on the list. All right. So, first, or Roshona, or Roshon. Remember earlier when I said this? Um, Haba al Sheru Ishto Ha Roshona. The husband of his first wife. Remember that? That was this word, Roshon. First. First. All right, or well, you have Rishona, the feminine. Okay, so first we have what on the list? 
Lish Lichim. Lish Lichim has the root word uh, Shalach, which this is the sent. Uh, so this is the one who is sent out. This would be an apostle. But we have the Hiragil Mem, so this is plural. So first we have on the list is apostles. Okay? So we have apostles on the list first. Off of y'all phone alone. All right. Then we have ve me an. So ve shenit, the shenit, which is in second. Lin veim has the root word navi, which is a prophet. Then we have navim, which is prophets plural. You know how we say tanakh, right? Like right here, we have tanakh up top. It says tanakh is an acronym. The Tav is an acronym for Torah. The N or the Na is the uh, prophets, and then the Chav Sofi is the writings. So this noon here is what you know right here Navim, prophets. See that? Yehoshua, which is Joshua. See that? Shephatim, which is Judges. Samuel Aleph, Samuel Beit, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. Melachim Aleph, Melachim Beit. See that? Which is first and second kings. See that? Yeshayahu, Isaiah, Yerimayu, um, Jeremiah, if you will. So, anyway, we have uh, in second prophets. Then we have Ush Lishit. Ush Lishit. All right. And those the third on the list is who? I'm not going fast. We have Lim Lam Din. Lim Lam Din. That means what? a teacher a teacher so i want to stop here first because you get people oh well um um well technically wouldn't you be like a bishop or a deacon no no them lambdin teachers that or you have more uh, these are teachers that's what that says right there teachers there all right teachers so let's go ahead and continue. Then it says, um, Vayite, give root. Now I think this is uh, interesting right here to me because um, it's letting me know. And after that, um, so it has the root word here. You have the Gemel, Vet. Then you have this word here, Resh, Gabar. You know how people say, oh, that's, 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 that's my brother Gabar, right? That's power. Mighty and a valor, all right. Like if you look at Sefer Devarim, a book of Deuteronomy 25, uh, the word man is not talking about a regular man, but a warrior, a mighty one, a powerful one, if you will. You know, let's deal with military, that's another topic. I had a uh, lesson on that one, I got a few of them, you know. But anyway, so let me know after that it says power. Now, why would it say that? Because my King James Version says. Miracles. This one says power. That is dealing with power, all right? But what kind of power? Something that's very mighty, very, very mighty. That is dealing with miracles. Let me kind of show you something real quick. Because even in your concordance, I believe we should see that. Let me go here. First Corinthians 12 and 28. Oh, yeah, there we go. There go miracles. Click on miracles. Right. The strong definition rendered it as what? Force. That go power. Specifically miraculous. What? Power. See that? Abundance meaning. Power. Strength. Look at this. Mighty. Wonderful word. Something powerful, if you will. See that? So that's why it has that there. See that? Guess the translator wasn't inspired, you know. So they understood that. Those in the Hebrew, we understand that though. That that is rendering power. Power. See that? So we got apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, powers. See that? Off. Um, we have Af Mat Note. Oh, actually, I gotta read that too. Har 
Fu Oat. Letting us know. And after that, we have the gifts of healing. Rafa. You know, like Raphael, healer of God. That's Rafa right there. The root word there. Oats is feminine plural. Healings. That's what that says right there. See that? Then we got the gifts of healings. Then we got the gifts of healings. Now, what's next? Ut Michot. Now, that's interesting. Ut Michot. Ut Michot. What is that? So now we have Ut Michot. Uh, Vehad. I'm sorry. Vehan Hagot. So now we got what you know as your governments. This will be your superintendents, if you will. Another way to say that. Then we have Omini Le Chinot. So in other words, you have a mixture of tongues, if you will. That's what that says right there. A mixture of tongues or um, uh, different kinds of tongues, if you will. Uh, I believe the uh, King James Version may say that. You know, um, yeah. So, yeah, different kinds of tongues. But you see your governments there. Now, let me go ahead and do that. Hold on, let's go here. Where are we at? New share. Boom. Go here, boom. All right, first Corinthians 12. Uh, boom. Helps, if you will. I was telling you earlier, one who released a help, laying a hold of apprehension, perception, objection of um, disputing. Look at this, to aid a help. Then we learn about attend, attendant. Hmm? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just a different way to say it. Relief. Look at this. A succor, help, partaker, support. Same thing. Same exact thing. Look at this. So, this would fall under the lines of what you know as your deacons. I'm sorry, this. <laughs> then this, governments, one who is of power, the overseers, if you will. Look at this. In Latin, polish. That is, dictatorship, government. Because earlier, when you look at, oh wait, let me do the new share, I apologize. Oh, let me go, boom. I wanna show you something that you might have missed actually. Um, here we go, boom, share. Okay, so, check this out. Move this out the way, boom. Here we go. The handles. That's like in a driver, one who steers. Right? And the practices of, oh, wait, let me go here. I'm tripping. There we go. There you go to your support. I want to show you that. And support. Look at this. Assistant, A, help. See that? Got your support. All right, so also, let's see, here we go. There we go. The Han Pagot. All right. Check this out. As we have, this is dealing with one who's driving or steering. All right. And that's going to mean something. So obviously, it really has the practices, but let's take this off and, and let's take and, and let's take the off. And let's take the feminine plural oat off. Driver. See this? Driver. Why is that important? Why is that important? Watch this. Define steer. 
This is like one who's driving, steer, like when you steering, right? The steering wheel says of a person who will guide or what control the movement. This is dealing with the governments. This is where you have your bishop, your overseer, if you will, of a vehicle, vessel, or aircraft. Let's give an example. But by uh, example only, turning a wheel or operating a rudder, just like when you operate in a car, it drives, right? So look at this, guide, direct, right? Like a pilot as well, guide, conduct, direct, lead, take, Usher, escort, sh shepherd. Ooh, look at that. See that? So it's dealing with that in charge. All right. Now, notice it's associated also with the ox. Those in the Hebrew, the Aleph, or the Ah, of the Allah, it's an ox. It means first, strength, leader, power, the controller, if you will. So steering is also associated with the ox as well. Those who know the Hebrew, that means something to us. But why am I bringing this up? Let's go and deal with this. Okay, so remember we have your um, governments, right? Governments, right? The dictatorship, right? Government. Look at this, a Latin origins, look at that. To steer, to steer. Look at this right there, to steer. Down here, it says it's down here as well. To steer, that's a driver. See that, it's controlling a vehicle. It's, it's you know, making the car move. It's making things happen. Who does that? A bishop, but everybody is not a bishop. Everybody's not qualified to be a bishop. Everybody don't desire to be a bishop. Even if they wanted to be a bishop. See that? Just like when, 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 you, when you look at this here, it says, are all apostles? We know the answer is no. Everybody in the church body is not an apostle. One who sent. Are all prophets? We know the answer is no. Are all teachers? We know that answer is no. Everybody's not fit to teach as well. Are all workers of miracles? powers as we done earlier we know the answer is no have all the gifts of healing can everybody do it in the church body no do all speak with tongues do everybody speak with languages no do all interpret mean translate no you see that but cover earnestly the best gifts and i will show unto you a more excellent way like me when i get there so understand that everybody is not a bishop or a deacon within the church body Everybody's not a help or in a government um, part of the church. But notice that, that that says to steer, right? Where is that? There we go. Boom. To steer. Dictatorship. To steer. That's what you got driving. In other words, when you saw that in the Hebrew text. So I get why that's there. Matter of fact, remember earlier, we were in numbers. Uh, Numbers chapter 3 Was it verse 32 Yeah it says And Eleazar the son of Aharon And Aaron the priest Shall be chief over the chief Of the Levites Remember that And have what The oversight of them To keep charge of the sanctuary But that oversight Right Look at this Overseer The role of oversight Is to watch over Look at this Direct That's the word for steering Right Driving same thing it's the same thing charge look at this governor then we just see earlier governments huh look at this oversight care custody mustering visitation store oversight look at this let's go down Picuda. to keep charge over ordering oversight chiefly an official See that? Go on to the root words. Boom. Look at this, guys. Oversight. Overseer. This is the one who's driving. The person in the driver's seat, if you will. That's the one in charge. Think about it. You're driving a car. You're steering a car. Who's in charge? You. 
because you are controlling the movement. You are controlling the movement. So going back to 1 Corinthians 12. So we had uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, dealing with governments. You're the steerer, you're the driver. You're the one in dictate. This is, of course, if you're a bishop, of course. And if you're a bishop, then obviously you can't be the husband of one wife. I'm sorry, you, you have to be the husband of one wife. I apologize. You can only be the husband of one wife. You can only be that. Only be the husband of one wife. If you are, because you're the one that's steering. You'll be the one that's driving. You can only do that. As you know, words mean things. Um, let's deal with the first Timothy. Uh, I'm not think about it. <clears throat> first Timothy chapter five. Let's go there real quick. First Timothy chapter five, because it's something I want to deal with. First Timothy five and nine. Really quick. All right. Um so right here, the word one right there, heist. See that? Boom. Go on somewhere with that. Let's go into the Hebrew text. So you see James actually agreed with um, the actual um, text this uh, receptus with that. Uh, let's go ahead and deal with this. Boom. Matter of fact, now I'm going to pull this. Yeah, I, nope. I'm going to go ahead here. Since we've been here all, all along. Okay, so uh Corinthians boom. Okay. So we're gonna go to first Corinthians chapter five. Boom. I'll go ahead and let you get there. First first uh Timothy chapter five. All right. So we have Igoret Polos Harushona El Timo Iso. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Timotheos, Perek, Aleph. So again, we have Igret, which is a letter, Palos, Paul, the letter of Paul, Haroshona, uh, the letter of Paul, to Timothy, chapter 5. And it's the fifth letter, America volume 5. So we're going to go to, um, let's see, verse 9. All right, let me go ahead and put it up here. Translate Hebrew to English once again. Okay, verse nine. Uh, so it says, Almana, which is a, uh, a widow. That's what left know was a uh, female. So Almana, um, Al, then we have Tibachir. So this is letting me know, don't let the widow be uh, selected. That would be the proper word there, selected, all right? Uh, I believe the King James may say taken, but it says selected here. Um, Zulati, bat shishim shana. So in other words, except she be of uh, 60 years old. So in other words, don't count her or select her to be the widow in your congregation unless this woman is at least 60 years of age. All right. Uh, and um, if you saw my video a long time ago, I did one uh, called... Um, First Timothy uh, five and eight myth, I believe. Um, it's on my, you know, it's at youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter, J U D A H D A S H O O T A H, of course. So letting us know, do not select, um, 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 do not select the widow um, unless she's uh, six years of age. Um, so again, the widow, of course, has an age. Then we have Vashir Haita. And which was, in other words, Ishet, wife, Ish, husband, Echad, one. All right, not first. So, in other words, um, and which was the wife of one man. All right, so in other words, this would be equivalent to um, this is saying that don't select this woman to be a widow in your congregation, right? Um, if she ain't at least 60 years old, you know what I'm saying? And haven't been the uh, wife of one man, of course. Now, 
and where each there is um, technically husband. All right. So I know the King James Version says man, but I want to, uh, I did that on purpose because I want to come back and revisit that. Ish is husband. All right. It's husband. Now, man is Adam. But you know, it's Adam. All right. So this is specifically referring to a husband. Obviously, we know the context. So, um, al mana al tigbachir zulati bat shishim shana bashir hata ishet ish echad. So, yes, it's letting me know it's dealing with a, a man, but specifically a husband. All right. Uh, matter of fact, I'll give an example of what I mean by that. I mean, my back is itching. It's because on my chair. Ah. Okay. So, um, in the Hebrew New Testament, let's go to, um, um, here we go. Boom. First Corinthians, uh, first Corinthians, um, chapter 15, actually. All right. First Corinthians 15. All right, first Corinthians 15, and we're going to go to 47. Uh, all right, so as you see, we have Igret Polos, Haroshona El Hachorin Tee, Perek 15. So, the epistle or letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15. And we're going down to 47. All right. Kind of give an example of why I'm saying um, Ish, which is husband, and this is man. So it says, Adam Harishon. Look, there it is again. Harishon. Look, we have been on this word all day, haven't we? Rosh, remember that? Resh, Aleph, Shen. Rosh, head, top, first. Yes. So, um, Adam Harishon, men Adama. Who share a far? This is interesting right here. Yeah. Interesting. That's real interesting. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Huh. Well, this caught me off guard here. Well, anyway, it says, Vaha Adama Hashini, who Hadon Men Hashamai. Okay. So we have Hadam Harushon Men Hadama. Letting us know that the um, that the first man is from Adama, the earth. All right. So you see right here, you have Adam, Adam. Then you have Ha, which is the Adama. Has the same word, Adam, the same thing. But um, so let us know that the first man is from the earth. Um, who? Um. Wow. Then we say, uh, we got who share afar. Let us know that he's also earthy. I believe. Oh, yeah, from the dust, in other words. He's of dust. That's crazy right there. Of dust. All right. Let's see if that has that there. Let me copy and paste that real quick. Dust. All right. Yeah, dirt. Dust. Earth. That's real interesting there. So it's letting us know that he is of dust or yeah, dust. So, um, wow, that's actually the first time I've actually seen that. You know, it's definitely the first time I've seen that. All right. So let us know that he's of dust. All right. That was really good. I like that. Hmm. So the first man is of the earth, of course. Letting us know um, the first man is of the earth. And he's of dust. Um, I believe the King James Version says earthy, I believe. All right. But then it goes on to say, um, the Hadam Hashinihu Hadon Men Hashemai. Letting us know. Um, and the second man is the Lord or Lord Men, which is from. Hashemayim, the heavens. So, we see Adam, not Ish, 
which is of course husband. Arish, which is husband. All right. So the first Timothy five and nine, um, in your King James version said, having been the wife of of one man, is technically Ish, which is husband, having been the wife of one husband. All right, so I'm saying in a sense because a lot of people use that and uh, some of them will even twist uh, the um, um, that verse, you know, and hanging on the word one that they take out of context. So a lot of them do play on words. This is why I'm actually showing you what these words means from the actual verses, from the actual verses itself. So you can see that this word applies to this verse and that word, showing you Hebrew, Greek, and in English. All right. Um, another case example would be for husband. Um, let's go back down. Um, I want to go to. Uh, yeah. Let me go here. Um, what is it? Um, think, 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 think. Okay. Oh yeah, it's eleven. I'll go eleven. Okay. Let me see. Let's key. Nikani ani lachem kanat elohim ki karashti etchem laish yerechad. There we go. Okay, yes, it's here. All right, so we have Eret Polos, which is the up oh, all the way. Um, Hashinit. So the second letter of Paul. So once again, the second. Letter of Paul. El Hachorinti to the Corinthians. Perech chapter. This yod here is numerical value of 10. And this is Aleph, which is numerical value of uh, 1. So this is chapter 11. All right. Chapter 11. And verse 2 is what I was actually focused on here. Uh, so we have a uh, key. Mechane ani lachem. Kenat Elohim ki um Kedashti et Kim Here we go Laish Echad Huh That's very interesting <laughs> I'm gonna continue Lahamid Betula or what you say about the Wala that you know this is a virgin it ain't been touched You know you get the people that twist the word virgin I did a topic on this already you know It's only young one a marriage bleach that's another topic, though. But anyway, but the wala for your lashawan korash, or betula, tehora levne ha mashiach, ha mashiach, as you say, or ha mashiach. So, hmm, interesting. So I see right here laish echad. Why am I dealing with that? Because guess what it says in the English Bible. Let me share. That's the word there. Uh, boom. Okay, First Corinthians. Let me go there real quick. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians. Come on, where you at? Oh, there we go. Second Corinthians, eleven and two. Okay, same thing. Laish echad. Highlight that. Is it gonna let me highlight it? Yep, there we go. Boom. Why is that? Because it didn't say Adam or Adama. I'm sorry, Adam. So here it is. It says, well, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy for I've espoused you to one husband. So you see that word husband there is a man, but it's the word Ish. Laish. See that? So remember going back. This llama here that I highlighted in blue, that means it can mean two or four. All right, it's a prefix. So two, go back. So two, one, ish, husband. All right, I'm showing you the word that's there. Ichad. Remember earlier where I showed you that word? One. It didn't mean first. Roshon. Didn't say that at all. La ish ichad. Two, one husband. Two, one husband. So these words mean things. Dealing back with the first Timothy five again. And nine. Amana al Tibahir. 
Tulati. Tulati Bat Shishi. Shina. Bashir Haita. Ishet. Ish. Everybody wear Ish again. But husband, Yechad. See that again? So it's letting us know. Um, let not a widow be selected. See that? Look at that. Boom. Except she's 60 years old, basically. Which was, after the King James Version, they haven't been. Uh, the hub. Ah, uh, yeah. The wife of one husband. Wife of one husband. So, showing you what words means. Um, showing you in the Hebrew, showing you in the Greek. Um, I definitely know and understand that when I go to 1 Timothy 3, dealing with things like um, the overseer of the congregation, of course, this is a person that has an actual congregation, as we see in uh, 1 Timothy 3. So this is somebody in the actual, what you call a building, a congregation, a crowd of people, if you will. Then we have, the words are actually like the sons, but this is the attendant. We went over that. But all Isha, Echad. Remember, Ish, we just learned was husband. Isha is wife. Okay? So, um, yeah. Nashim is wives, of course. Now, again, so a bishop or a deacon, part of a congregation, these bishops, is an overseer, oversight, right? He steers, he's the one in control. Call it a shot call, as you call it. The deacon is the help. They running errands, they waiting tables, they're a waiter. You see what I'm saying? The modern is teaching, but the ancient, no. All right. The minister means to serve. All right. Not in the sense of in the uh the job of uh teaching. Not at all. So they're not Maureens or more, which is a teacher or teacher. All right. So you have first Timothy again. So this is a true saying. If there's an if, you don't have to be, but if a man desires, if he desires a warrant, the job of a bishop, that's if he desires the good word. Now we're going to the qualifications if you want to be that. A bishop then must be blameless. Then he must what? Be the husband of one wife. Think about it. That don't even make sense. He must be blameless, the husband of his first wife, village, and servant. No, not in that context. Not in that context. So here it is. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. And again, let me go here. So, about all is to shell is. Hold on, wait. Let me go back. Husband on wife of. <laughs> hold on, go back. About all shell is to harushona. Oh, hold on. About all is to the husband. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you got the husband. Have all? Uh, no, wait. Have all shell each toe harushona. The husband of his first wife. Again, it should say that. It should say that. I even typed it out for you all. Get your Hebrew keyboard if you want. You can even get on. You can download on your phone as well, or you can download on your MacBook Pro. I don't know about other computers. Download Eastward. It's the app I have. That's what you've been looking at, the Eastward app. You've been watching my videos for years. You already know, though. So, again, First Timothy three two, dealing with the qualifications of a bishop. First Timothy three twelve, dealing with the qualifications of a deacon. And first, I'm sorry, in Titus chapter one, verse four through six, or well, four on down, at least the ten is dealing with your elders or your overseers. But in verse six that person was told well um he told titus to um basically choose these men of this type of characteristics and um they had to only have one wife 
and they have to have children as well. So they have to be family men, but at least um, they have to at least have children and have to be monogamous. But again, everybody don't qualify to be a bishop or an overseer. Everybody's job is not to teach. So brother, stop saying that. I don't see you teaching. Everybody ain't, that ain't everybody's job. Everybody can be a more or more read. You get what I'm saying? So like, um, what's that book of James chapter four? Remember, um, James 3 and 1, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that you shall receive the greater condemnation. Right? You're going to get it the worst. So look at this. Achi. I'm sorry. Achai al yeyu rabi. Rabi. That's what you know as rabbi. Then it says, Mechem le morim. Morim. What's that? Let me highlight that. Remember I said more? And Maureen, remember that earlier? Let's go ahead and go here. Boom. Boom. Teachers. Tutors. See that? See that? It's uh, Malmad. Right? That's basically what we read in 1 Corinthians 12 earlier. Another way to say teacher. See that? Look at this right here. Boom. More. I'm more. Look at this. Here go more. Right here. Let me highlight that. Boom. More. You know, hear people say more. Teacher. So everybody's not fit to be a more. Everybody not fit to be that. Everybody not fit to be a tutor, if you will. All right? But there's a difference between bishops, deacons, and then one who is a teacher, one who is an apostle. There's different administrations in the body, but again, the bishops and the deacon, this is talking about a person that has a congregation, specifically. I showed you that in the Hebrew and I showed you that in English. Remember? Let me go back, hold on, just in case you forgot. Let me show my screen. Boom. Um, just in case you forgot. All right, chapter three, boom. All right, it meant how to borrow each is the true saying for man. All right, we go. Let it load for. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Um, how you done? Look at this right here. Let me exit out that. Boom. Look at that. And the bishop of the congregation should. So here we go. And the bishop of the congregation. I'm sorry. And the bishop. I'm tripping. <laughs> what I'm tripping of the congregation, and this is the word for should must. So, um, as you know, once again, that must was boom. He had to be monogamous, right? But um, going back, specifically, this bishop, right, and the bishop. Right. He was a he's over a what? How you doing? Testimony, certification. All right. I forgot I got ready to gather. Sorry about that. And boom. And the bishop of the congregation. All right. Dealing with that. And um well we had um English. Oh, we go. First Timothy, boom, chapter three, boom. So, in English, remember this qualification overseer. Once again, is letting us know this bishop had to be blind. He had to be monogamous. He had to be vigilant, sober of good behavior, giving hospitality to point to teach, not given to wine or striking. Not greedy with the lucre. Patient can't be a brawler, not covetous. But it says one that ruled well his own house. Rule, right. Can't be a noodle bag. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. But it says, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Right? It's a congregation. Right? So again, youtube.com slash house of Judah. Like, share, and subscribe. Again, this is not a shot at anybody. I do know that some people disagree with that. 
and I'm okay with that, you know. It really ain't nothing to argue about, you know. We see it differently. You may see it that way. This is how I see it, you know. But um, I'm cool with that. But I, but I'm looking at it like, yo, when I'm looking at the text, the context, um, the Texas receptus, you know, before the um, James Strong's, you know, and I look at all this stuff, you know, what I'm saying I'm drawing conclusions on what we reading, and I'm seeing that, yo, the if you over a, a congregation, you're an elder over a congregation, a bishop over a congregation, you ought to be monogamous. That don't apply to me though. <laughs> you know, I'm Polly, you know, and you know me, you, you know that, you know, me and my wives, we even got our own YouTube channel, a separate channel, you know, so if you know me, you know the channel as well, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, um, this ain't talking about if you teaching on YouTube or, you know what I'm saying, if you out in the street teaching, I'm not talking about you, you get what I'm saying, or if you, um, you know what I'm saying? If you are uh, a helper, uh, you know what I'm saying, a deacon, I'm not talking about you, but if you got a congregation of people and you over it, and that's what it is. You know, you can play these games, oh, I ain't that, I ain't no elder, I ain't no, yes, you are. That's what it is. Everybody looking to you as what? The elder. You, when something goes wrong, they come into you. Who's the one in charge? Who's the one that's steering it? If you don't want to call it that cool, but guess what? That's what you are. Even if you don't want to accept that. You know what I'm saying? So if something go wrong with your church or your congregation and everybody coming to you, you the one that's steering, you the one that's watching over everything, making sure stuff is in order, right? Those are key fees days when the fees days roll around. You making sure uh you making sure this is done, making sure that get done. Y'all the deacons. You the one that's helping and doing all that, y'all the deacons. You might not want to call it that, but that's what deacons do. Serving, waiting tables. Guess what? Y'all the deacons. That's just what it is. You know. So yeah. Y'all the deacons. Those is helping. Making sure this, making sure that running errands, right? In charge of the money. Right? You in charge of money and all of that? Okay, cool. Right, you 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 making sure the money's all right and all of that. Okay, cool. Go ahead, treasurer. You're helping. <laughs> Go ahead. That's helping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So hey, that's just what it is. You know, but this don't mean the people who's coming to your church, sitting in your church. You know what I'm saying? That's being served by the deacons and you know what I'm saying stuff like that. They can have more than one woman, of course. And if you've been watching my channel, you already know I've been dealing with a whole bunch of little hot topics already, you know, already been dealing with it. Oh, wait, let me go ahead and share my screen. Hold on. Apologize. Um, YouTube.com forward slash backslash Judah the Shooter. I've been um, slowly going over these lessons that people, oh, you can't have money with me. I've been doing that already. So I did that first Corinthians 7 and 2. So don't comment that. I already dealt with that. Watch that video. Concubine. Concubine versus concubines. I get that a lot. Oh, a concubine's a slave and all of that. Ah. Pilagish. Pilagishahim. Paramore. Let's break that down what that is. So I dealt with that. Um, single sisters, definitely watch that video. Uh, Makes the mission great again. I the Hebrew New Testament. But not that when um, Romans 13, oh, it was against the laws of the land. Oh, believe me. Yeah. Romans 13, laws of the land video. Even people who are polygynous. Exodus 21, 10, 11, ain't talking about that. The world, I ain't going to give it away. Just watch this video. <laughs> watch this video. Um, multiple wives in the same house. Oh, they can't live in the same house. Watch that video. First Timothy 8 myth. That's the one I was talking about earlier. Um, Proverbs 27, polygyny myth. Uh, there's a false teaching on that. I dealt with that as well. Um, there's a false teaching on a, well, you got to submit to me too, husband. Ephesians 5, 21. 
submitting yourselves one to another. I broke that down in context, what that actually really meant. You know, uh, James 4 and 17, you get some people, oh man, well, you know, uh, Genesis uh, 2, it's uh, one man, one woman, it was good. And if you know to do right and you do wrong, it's a sin. And they twist James 4 and 17. You ever heard somebody twist James 4 and 17? You know, if you know you're supposed to be doing good and you don't, it's sin unto you. Re watch that video. <laughs> It'll show you how to deal with that. They take in that out of context. Or Romans 14, you know, uh, um, if it's not a faith, it's sin unto you or whatnot. So they take that out of context. It was Romans 14, 23, I want to say. But uh, I talked about that here. You know, um, so yeah, um, I definitely got some lessons on that. And I'm going to be, I'm eventually I'm going to do every scripture. Uh, going over every uh, scripture that everybody say that it's, you know, it, that you can't do it. It's a sin. You know, it's all about timing with me. You know, I don't put a lot of videos up so fast. I do it on purpose. And then I do other things. Go to the channels, you know, definitely got to be, you know, I giving to the homeless and, you know, doing my ministry. You know, I do my counsels almost every day. Well, pretty much almost every day, basically. Uh, teaching somebody almost every day. Just don't stop. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. Um, that plus I'm courting, you know. So I definitely got that going, you know. Definitely gonna have extensions to my household as well. Um, so um, yeah, it's basically what it is. Long story short, hope it's helpful to somebody. Uh, I need Yehuda Yorah, Shalom. Hey, you guys, we are the Treadline Queens. I know everything's been kind of hectic dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic, but please don't let that discourage you guys from getting your credit straight. So if you have credit card debt, medical bills, inquiries, evictions, or even bankruptcies, we are here to help you. So give us a call at 1-833-CLUB-700. That's 1-833-258-2700. Mention 244 to receive a discount from Treyline Queens.